Jason Fitz from Yahoo Sports here, hanging out with Kirk Cousins here with us on behalf of the Kidda Cause for Alarm campaign. We'll get to that in just a second. But first, I watch quarterback. Everybody watched quarterback. How weird was it for you to go back and watch a season where the world followed you? <laughs> well, it was weird for me to kind of work through the rough drafts because they sent me kind of the initial stuff in like February, March. It obviously ended up releasing in July. And I was able to kind of say, hey, you know, this is I like this, don't like this and give some feedback. I actually, since it released in July, have not seen it uh, because I watched those those rough drafts so many times that I feel like I watched it before America watched it. <laughs> a lot of reality TV stars will tell you, you get used to cameras being in your face. You're used to being interviewed like this, but was it different having people follow around every aspect of your life? It was a bit of a commitment. I think NFL Films did a really good job. They follow us players all the time to begin with, you know, even without a Netflix documentary. They're around, they're filming games, practices, miking us up. So they know how to get the content they need while not being too intrusive. And I can't say enough about the job they did. Um, obviously, Peyton Manning's team at Omaha Productions did a great job as well producing it. So you know, it's just good to be surrounded by great people. And uh, I kind of trusted them to do their job. And I let the story kind of tell itself. And we had a great year. And it was it was fun to be a part of. I'm really glad we did it. Now, you guys had a great year last year, no doubt. This year, off to a little bit of a slow start. You've been in the league so long. How do you sort of manage a slow start on a football season? Well, on one hand, you say, hey, long year. You know, a lot of football left ahead. Certainly, you believe that the next 15 games are going to determine things far more than the first two. That being said, you can't be saying that all year long. You know, at some point, it's got to turn. You got to play better. You got to win. And so uh, we've dug ourselves a little bit of a hole, and we've got to get out of it, and it's it needs to start this Sunday. It just feels like everybody has a Kirk Cousins opinion. It's just you're one of those guys that it feels like it, it, sports talk shows could just go on and on about Kirk. How do you block out the noise? Uh, I can just stay pretty insulated. You know, in the football facility, uh, we got the TV set to – you know, the tennis channel and the golf channel and the hunting channel. And we're not really seeing the 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 hot takes that are out there. And then, uh, you know, when I'm driving home, I'm not listening to sports talk radio. I'm usually calling a family member or listening to music. So I stay pretty insulated. And my six and my four-year-old are young enough. They're not really keeping me updated on the sports world either. So uh, I just kind of keep earmuffs on with my daily life. And I think it helps to stay insulated and focus on the task at hand. How do you find balance during a football season? We watch so much of it during quarterback, but how do you not take it home and, and manage to find that time with the family? Yeah, so that was the question I was asking myself my first year starting way back in 2014, 15. Uh, what does this look like? What's my routine? Now it's just, you know, without even thinking, I know how to kind of plug and play. But uh, certainly you have a balance. You, you know, I take Tuesdays off, and then you understand what Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday need to look like to be ready for a Sunday game. And um, you know, we just played on a Thursday. And so you have a bit of a weekend to catch your breath. And so you use that time to do so, to do so. So, um, you find your rhythm, your routine, you execute it. And, uh, you know, it's been working for me for eight, nine years. I'll keep doing it. Well, I mean, obviously, since you're not listening to the hot takes, everybody has been talking about your division all off season, right? The lions look like they're on the up and there's no Aaron Rodgers inside the division. How does it feel this year compared to most years? Well, change in this league is just, part of the deal. You kind of expect there to be change every year on your team, on the teams around you. And certainly our division experienced some big change this year with Rodgers leaving. He had been a, you know, a mainstay, a fixture for so many years in Green Bay. And uh, it is a little unique after having far and rushed for all those years to see someone else under center for Green Bay. But, uh, um, you know, Detroit certainly as well is, is just finished the season so strong last year. And uh, they look really sharp in their first two weeks. And they lost a tough one to Seattle. But they, they look like a really good football team that's that's challenging. And I think Chicago as well has, has really gotten better. So, um, you know, the North is a tough division. And, um, you know, because we dug ourselves a hole at 0-2, we've got a lot of work to get out of it. Even with all of the exposure that you've had throughout your whole career, what do people not know still to this point about Kirk Cousins? Uh, if it hasn't been documented yet, I think the Netflix uh, story hopefully <laughs> hopefully captured it. Otherwise, I may have to sign up for the next season. But, uh, you know, I think even now in year 12, I'm still evolving as a player. I think so many times we try to write a book on a guy and say oh, after year one or two or three, oh, he didn't pan out. He, you know, he's this, he's that. And, you know, I remember the John Wooden quote that Sean McVay used to always teach us back when I was in Washington, that you have to be chasing continuous improvement. That's really what we're going for. And, I, I even just lining up the other night against the Eagles, I feel like I'm a different quarterback than I was two, three years ago. And so 
you know, the day I'm no longer improving is the day I'll retire. And I do think that um, improvement's a big part of, of my game and I'm still getting better. That requires so much patience and perspective in the overall journey. What kind of message would you give the young quarterbacks? There's so many of them coming into the league that we expect immediate success from. What would you tell them? Yeah, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Um, there's going to be highs and there's going to be lows. Uh, tough times don't last, but tough people do. So stay the course. Make sure you're mentally, physically, emotionally tough. And uh, don't be surprised when this league and this game kicks you in the, in the mouth and, and have a response. And then create a routine and a plan that, that you use to get ready each week and then trust that plan and go through it, execute it, and believe that it's good enough to, uh, to not only win but to, uh, to last in this league. I mentioned kid a cause for alarm. Obviously, this is something super important to you. Tell everybody about it. Yeah, so kid is a global leader in uh, in fire safety equipment, and um, they're now in year two of their cause for alarm campaign, and they have a jingle that that's called beeps that last get out fast. And so they've written that to just kind of help be educational for not only kids but for parents to learn the importance of of having the fire safety equipment in their home. That's not only there, but that it's functional. Um, and it can only help if it's if it's functional. So uh, there's a, a stat out there from the NFPA that says that 70 percent of homes in America are not properly equipped if there were to be a fire in the home. And, um, and so I think a lot of us, you know, it's just not on the forefront of our minds to have the equipment up to date, to make sure the batteries are up to date. To, you know, this equipment has a lifespan of about 10 years. So making sure we replace it is very important. And um, um and so I just want to get the word out, make sure that we do have it on the forefront of our minds to uh, to get it addressed so that our our children and our families are are safe from a from a, in the event of a fire. Look, you mentioned the jingle off. We all know you got the musical background. So do I like that's my past. All right. So were you involved in the jingle making you singing this? You know, like what's Kirk Cousins involvement in the jingle? Come on. So that's the next the next deal with Kidda will be that I write the song. So <laughs> year one or this is year two of the campaign. They write the song. But year three. I'll probably get a songwriting credit, and I look forward to doing that. Dude, I spent 15 years of my life on tour buses and country music. I can promise you one thing. You need that songwriting credit. Like, yes. it, it changes the economics. Now, I, right. Obviously, economics. But no, I, I appreciate your time, Kirk. Thanks for all the good things you're doing. It was fun to get to know you better on quarterback. I hope we can continue that journey, man. Thanks for hanging out with us. Absolutely, Jason. Thank you. Uh, great seeing you. And, uh, yeah, go Vikings and go Kidda.